Well, let's get this started then. Doop, doop. Oh, there we go. So, this is Rabby Rabby. This is a game where you are a bunny that became a human. And your goal is to save your master's sister. And also maybe save the world along the way, but nah, not that important. So this game is a Metroidvania, a bullet hell, and also a game where you whack some people with hammers. Because I couldn't find a genre that actually like made sense for that, so I just made up a name for it. Um, and the first thing you'll notice right now is you move very fast. So right now, the way we're moving is with quick drops. Quick drop is when you are jumping in the air and you press down plus jump. It brings you automatically to your um, top falling speed, I guess is the way you could say it. And it also gives you a slight uh, horizontal speed boost. So right now with no movement items, this is the fastest way to move around. We're also smacking some people with hammers right now, even though we don't really need to. We want to get some hammer levels. Your, um, your hammer actually has levels, and as it levels up, you get some new attacks. And we want a specific attack for the next boss that is after this boss. Um, here you just saw me do a wall launch. A wall launch is... Well, there is... There's actually a couple of things to explain here first. So, the, um, in this game, you have something called a reverse wall jump. Um, a reverse wall jump is when you are facing away from the wall at least once during your jump. You can actually wall jump from a wall. I guess it's kind of like Super Metroid's wall jumps. I'm not exactly sure how those work, but I think they work very similarly to this. And if you do a quick drop before you do a reverse wall jump, you actually go really far with your wall, uh, wall jump. Uh, that was Ribbon, so I needed the up drill for that fight, so I could do a very particular setup and do a glitch at the very end of the fight, which is a little bit too complex for uh, commentary purposes, so I'm going to skip it, but uh, essentially you just go into the next room instead of the room where you would normally end the fight at. Saves a solid 4 seconds or so. Um, so here's a great quick mini boss, so now we have the quad combo, so we can do a little bit more damage and open up some new boss strats. So the, with the second boss down, I actually have Ribbon now. Ribbon is my secondary weapon, with the hammer being my uh, primary weapon. So Ribbon is like our magic um, ranged option for fighting bosses. Ribbon also has levels, so we need to level her up as well, so I'm going to be killing a lot of enemies with Ribbon in this area. And what you're about to see us pick up here is um, an easter egg. Easter eggs were added as part of the easter update, which I'm not exactly sure what update number that was. But um, what they do is they give you uh, 1,500 yen, which is the currency in this game, per egg. So we need a lot of money in this route to get a lot of items and all that good stuff. So we will be grabbing quite a few eggs on the way. Eggs are also used to get uh, rainbow magic, but we won't be using that, so I won't be talking much about it. So we're nearly done with um, the beach area now, which is one of the last big areas of Prologue. And I guess there's one more thing I want to explain. Um, as we are approaching the uh, green Coachery, which is the first chapter one boss. Um, right now you can see our item percentage at the very top, which is 2%. Um, we want to keep that under 5% for Green Coachery. The reason for that is that Green Coachery... Well, no, that's not the way to say it. When you're under 5% items... Um, no, not, that's not the good way to say it either. When you reach 5% items... All bosses gain a significant health boost. And the same thing happens when you reach 10%. And for our specific green coachery strat, we want to stay under 5%. So that way she becomes really, really easy to kill. So now, like, prologue's over, chapter 1's here. And I should be getting the panda combo pretty soon if I haven't already gotten it. If not, I'll be getting it during the green coachery fight. 
So you can see that we are actually like doing hammer hits to very specific enemies. All of our hammer levels are routed out from the beginning so that we can get the panel combo right here. So as you can see that was a really easy boss just thanks to that. We're also going to be staying under 10% for quite a while. We're going to be skipping quite a few items so that we can stay under 10% for um, something coming up in like 10 minutes or so, I would say. Here is Slipper's Early. Um, if you could catch that, that was just a reverse wall jump plus a wall kick. A wall kick is an action that you can do after a normal wall jump, which is just when you do a wall jump, if you reach another wall during that wall jump, you can just do a quick drop and you're gonna like kick off the wall. So that's a way to get to the slippers without having to go through a fairly long area. We will be going through that area again later to get a, a single item and to perform another glitch. So here is uh, Snowland. It is, well, you can see we're just skipping a ton of items. We'll be going back through here later to fight another boss. But right now we just want to fight Rita. Rita is um, a pretty easy boss to beat early game. Here she is. So we can just do... Um, oh yeah, I should mention reverse hits. Um, when you're hitting with your hammer, you can actually turn around in the middle of your combo. And you can hit with the back side of the hammer in that way. And the back side of the hammer actually does more damage than the front end of the hammer. So most of the time during combos we'll be turning around, or not turning around depending on how much damage we want to do. Most of the time we'll just be turning around though. So Rita is just a very fast early game boss, which is why it's perfect to just have her first. She dies very fast and her area isn't that long. Uh, this is Sassini. He has a computer, the computer's down. And we'll be using the boost for the first time here. So the boost is your special attack. You can see um, above Ribbon she has two bars. The lower bar is her MP, which is what she uses to attack. And the top bar is her boost meter. When that's full, you can press a button and it'll launch the boost. It's just Ribbon goes up and does a special attack depending on which type of magic she has active at the moment. It's pretty strong and it does a lot of stun lock as well, so it's great for a lot of bosses. This here, what I just did here, was ASG. ASG is short for Alias Save Glitch, and the way it works is that in this area, um, where the in like in the boss fight arena, there are auto save um, triggers. I guess would be the best way to say it. But during the boss fight, those auto save triggers aren't active. But um, for one frame after the fight is over you can actually uh, trigger those autosaves. So if you just stand in the right spot when the fight ends, you will trigger the autosave. And then after that, you can just reload your autosave and um, the boss is dead. And you can just move on to this boss, which is Alias 3. So you go from Alias 1 to Alias 3. We will be doing Alias 2 later because we don't have a choice. We actually do, well, if you do Alias 3 now, you will actually be able to completely skip entering chapter 4. But you can't do the same with Alias 2, so there's no point in going to fight Alias 2 right now. Um, what I'm doing right here is also I'm dropping a lot of carrot bombs. You can't kill this boss, you have to kill, well, Alias. The fake Noah, which is like the name of this boss. You can't defeat her right now. So you just have to... Um, well, wait until her phase is over, but during that time you can you can do damage to her, you just can't kill her. So we drop a lot of carrot bombs to level up our carrot bombs. When we level up our carrot bombs, we will decrease the delay on our carrot bombs, which is very good because we will, we're going to need them a lot to break some blocks that hide items. Now we're heading to the lab, we're about to pick up our... Well, we already picked up slippers, so I guess the second movement item, which is the sliding powder. And then we're going to completely change how we move. Here is Bunny Whirl, which is uh, also a neat movement item, but we just need it for um, a particular glitch coming up in 20 minutes or so. 
an investment, I guess you would say. So the reason we picked up Sassini was actually so that we could enter this place. You can't enter this place until you have Sassini down. Well, Sassini is also like a really fast boss to defeat early on. But we want to get in here as fast as possible so that we can get the sliding pattern because there's a lot of items that are hidden behind the sliding pattern. So these lasers are actually, um, the damage they do is dependent on how much item percent you have. If you're under 10% items, they will actually do a lot more damage than if you were above 10% items. There's a lot of like small changes like that that happen when you go from under 10% to above 10%. It's a little weird. Here's another egg. I think we'll be grabbing over 20 eggs during this entire run. Even though they're completely uh, mandatory. Oh yeah, I should also say the goal of this category is to get all percent related items. So that, mean, that, that, that does mean that we don't need to grab any of the eggs. We just grab them because they give us money, which is really, really nice. All enemies defeated give money, and the bosses give money depending on how much you hit them, I think. I'm not actually sure about that one. Which is to say that's not actually a lot and that we need more. Um, here you're going to see a zip. So if you're not familiar with zips, it's actually a way, a game's way of saying, hold on, you're inside a wall and you shouldn't be inside a wall. So I'm going to do something so that you're not inside the wall. And the way this game handles zips is that it just moves you to the right until you're not in the wall anymore. And why I zipped there was because I was in a slide corridor and I hit an enemy while I was in the slide corridor. And what that does is the game just does not behave properly and it just puts you in your standing position with the wrong hitbox. So it zips us there and it allows us to get an item pretty early on. That would normally be just kind of a pain to get to. So now we've done the computer sequence, which is the first time we go to lab. We're going to go grab wall jump and we're going to go do the boss rush. Now, if you're familiar with this game at all, you're going to be saying, what are you going to do to fight the boss rush right now? Boss rush is in chapter 6. And to that I would say yes, but uh, no. Because, well, as I just explained, there are zips in this game. And when you have access to slide, you have access to a lot of zips. So, now that we have the wall jump, well, no, not that we have the wall jump, now we have slide. We can actually start performing zips in quite a few places in this. So the next one coming up is going to be the one to enter boss rush. First up, we have to go through Coco K, which is just a lengthy, you know, just a lengthy section with a lot of enemies. It's kind of a pain to travel with the movement items that we have right now, but we got to do it. I'm going to be trying to use Bunny Whirl as much as I can here, because a quick drop plus Bunny Whirl, as you just see right there actually it gives you a lot of forward momentum. I think it's a really cool uh, movement, well, a way to move. So I try to do it as much as possible. It doesn't always work out. Just pick up this egg in here. You couldn't see if that was an egg. And now we have to go all the way back through Coco Cave to... We had to go all the way to grab the charge ring so that we could actually trigger this boss fight here when we leave. This doesn't trigger unless you go like pretty far into um, Coco Cave. This boss actually kind of sucks. Um, she's... Well, she's not very RNG, but it's... It's hard to do enough damage to defeat her before she... Um, does for a cut in attack. So I barely managed to get it here. So now we'll be going back through Coco Cave one more time so that we can uh, go to Boss Rush. So Boss Rush, well the entry to Boss Rush is at the very end of this and normally you're not supposed to access it until halfway through chapter 6. But uh, as you can see right here we've just um, a nice little slide zip we can easily enter boss rush 
and we're still under 10% items, so everything's gonna die really fast. So it's great, normally boss rush takes about five minutes to, to completely get through, but uh, it's gonna take about two minutes. So uh, I should explain uh, slide jump zips as well, because that's what we did to enter uh, boss rush. So slide jump zips, the way it works is halfway well, when you do a slide, you can jump, and after the apex of your slide jump, you're gonna start falling. And when you're sliding, your hitbox is kind of like at the tip of your feet, but when you go past that apex of your slide jump, your hitbox goes back to where it's normally supposed to be. And you can trick the game. If you're standing just below a ceiling, when you go past that apex, your hitbox can actually go inside the wall, and you can trigger a zip that way. I say it like it's not that much, but it's actually pretty precise. Thankfully, there are a lot of setups involved with slide jump zips, so it's not that big of a deal. So while I was explaining slide jump zips, we're about halfway through boss rush now. Ha did I say halfway? I meant like three quarters of the way through. Here's Gertrude, she's the toughest boss, she has a lot of health, she's done. Here's a very interesting mini boss actually. This mini boss doesn't spawn if you haven't picked up a single mana potion. I don't know why it's mana potions specifically, but that's how you trigger that mini boss. If you don't have a single mana potion, a mana a potion, and you go through there, that boss will not spawn. Here's Miru, she has a lot of health, but she's also dead. Here's Elias 4, she's also dead. And so that was the entirety of Boss Rush. That segment is so much tougher when you have above 10% items. So it's, it's very good that we can do it this early on. Now we'll be going to the shop for the first time. And what we'll be buying is 3 tack ups, a Bunny Amulet level 2, Wall Jump level 2, and Speed Boost level 2. We're also going to be uh, exiting from the shop after 3 tack ups. The reason for that is. The first time you visit the shop, you obtain speed boost. So we need to we need to get speed boost so that we can upgrade it to level two, of course. And the second time you visit the shop, if you have, well, the first time you visit the shop after you obtain um, sliding powder, you get bunny strike. So we want both. Of, we want bunny strike so that we can go to a an area. Well. It's an area that'd be pretty hard to access without Bunny Strike, so we would just grab Bunny Strike right here. We don't care about staying under 10% items anymore. So now we're going up through Park. We'll be grabbing pretty much all the items along the way except one, which we already skipped, you didn't see it. I tried to do a, a super bounce right there off that flower and it didn't work. Sometimes it doesn't work off flowers. Pretty weird. I'm also going to be playing pretty aggressive, trying to kill as much enemies as I can. So that I can get as much money as I can, because the upcoming shop trip is actually pretty tight on money. And you definitely don't want to be um, too low. Because the next shop trip is also one of the most important. We're going to be grabbing our final movement item. Uh, here's another slide jump zip. So that slide jump zip actually... I guess it'd be the longest slide jump zip, I guess you could say in a way, because we go from the park area to this area called Sky High Bridge. It transports us between two areas, and not just that, but it actually puts us at the very end of, well, the very bottom of Sky High Bridge, which is a very tough section to get to normally. So that way we don't even have to go down there to get the items here. We just start at the bottom and we work our way up. It's a very nice slide jump zip. You also get access to a pretty cool background effect the first time you... Well, when you enter from that slide jump zip. Now yeah, the background's back to normal, though. You're also going to be hearing the wrong music until we defeat the boss in this area. So, please enjoy Sky High Park. Uh, 
I guess I should try to explain the items that I bought in the shop just now. So attack ups are of course, well, their attack ups are pretty important. We want to do as much damage as possible to bosses so that they can go down faster and faster. Um, Bunny Amulet level 2 is... You see in the bottom left corner we have like these blue orbs. So Bunny Amulets are... I don't actually know how to say it. There's like invincibility attacks. It just stuns everything on the screen and it gives you a bunch of invincibility. So it's great for getting out of situations that you don't really want to be in. But it's also great for, uh, well, attacking because you stun lock the enemy and you gain also a little bit of SP back. SP is that little bottom bar that you see at the bar below arena sometimes. And when it's empty, you can't attack. So when it goes empty and you do an amulet, you actually get a little bit more attack. Here, we're going to do something weird. We're going to equip a badge after the fight starts. So normally you're not supposed to do that. Well, you can do that. In the first five seconds of a boss fight, you can switch your badge layout. And we're equipping the badge now because when you equip more badges in the, well, in the beginning of a fight, the boss level, well, the level of the boss increases uh, accordingly, but she doesn't get more health. So she just ends up with losing a little bit of health, as if if you were to put the badge before entering the fight, her level would already be scaled properly, and she would have all the health she would normally be supposed to have. But if you put it on after, she's not going to have that health. Her only The only thing that's going to change is her level and her stats, but her HP isn't going to go up. Um, here I did a little weird thing. You saw me go off to the side just so I can grab the warp. We're going to need to come back here later on because uh, the very last area of the game is above us right now. So grabbing that warp is the fastest way to get back here. Uh, here's Kotri 2. She's kind of a hard boss. I'm going to be doing something on her called Aerial Glitch. As you can see right here, I hit her with an up drill as she was jumping up. And normally when she's doing this attack, she's supposed to be like all the way in the air and you can't really hit her that well. But if you do Aerial Glitch, if you do an up drill while she's jumping up, she's actually just going to be at the very bottom during this entire fight. And we're going to be doing it here again. And so that way we can just hit her pretty much the entire time while she's attacking. Uh, there was something else I wanted to talk about. Oh yeah, the badge we put on in Vanilla's fight, which is the boss in the Sky High Bridge, is called Attack Trade. It's the only badge that's really worth putting on at any point in the game. So we trade some of our defense for some of our attack. Um, and all the, well, pretty much all the badges in this game, they increase boss levels a ton. So whenever you would put a badge on, it would increase the boss's levels so much that it's not actually worth putting on, because the boss takes so much longer. But with attack trade, um, it's the only badge that actually gives you enough attack so that it it's actually worth putting on at any point. So this area is actually the reason why we wanted um, Bunny Strike, I said earlier, the second item you got from the shop. To access the upper part of this area, we have to do a really tricky jump. Well, it's not normally a tricky jump, normally you have double jump when you want to go up there, but we don't, so we're going to do this. Yep, so you can do a slide jump and you can do a Bunny Strike after, and if you do it right, you can actually enter the top part of this area. We're actually going to grab any items up here, but we want to grab the warp so that we can come back here later. And now we're going to go back to the shop again. And you saw us pick up uh, an item at some uh, during that area. It's called Air Dash. And we're going to upgrade it to level 3 right away. And as you can see, we're going to be using it right away because it's really fast moving around with this. And we're also going to grab a Coco Bomb. A Coco Bomb is an item that does a ton of damage to everything on the screen. It's like an amulet, I guess, but you don't, it's just an offensive amulet. And we want it for an upcoming boss called Ashri. Well, I guess you saw us fight her Ashri in the prologue, we just have to fight her again later on. And Ashri is a very annoying boss, so we want to have the Cocoa Bomb to skip um, 
some annoying parts of her fight. Here's Elias 2, the one that we can skip. We don't want to get hit at all during this fight, because if we get hit, as you can see, we just suffer attack down and defense down, so this entire fight takes longer. Here's another thing. Yep, so when she amulets, because she amulets at the very end, well, this fight is in two phases. First up, you have to fight Arena, and then you have to fight uh, Ribbon. Well, like Dark Ribbon, I guess is a better way to say it. So, when you get hit by the amulet at the very end of the first phase, you actually suffer Shrink, which is just a way, way rougher defense down, I guess is the best way to say it. You definitely don't want to get hit by that, and you have to use an amulet of your own to go through it. Alright, coming up is actually probably the hardest trick in this entire run. It's called Cyber Flower Early, and it allows out it combined with other glitches, it allows us to skip the entirety of one area in this game. There is um, the second part of this area that we're in right now, Sisson 2. I accidentally opened my achievements here and do something stupid. Oh, I never mentioned this. Um, what we just did right there is that we went into the load menu during a mini boss fight. And if you do that and you scroll down in the load menu far enough, for some reason it messes up with some values in memory and you can actually end mini boss fights much earlier than intended. Alright, so this is Cyberflower early. So what we did when we first entered this area, we opened up a block. You can see right here, we opened up a block in the ceiling right there. And then we went to go grab air jump. If you go grab air jump before opening up this block, um, you can't actually open the block. You need, you need to not have air jump to be able to open up this block. And so now we're going to try to do a super bounce off of this maid, and we can grab cyber flower. So I did that really fast, it's actually like really complicated. Well, not really complicated, you just have to put the maid in the right position with um, up drills, or just movement, well, hammer attacks. But doing this, getting her to jump high in the hole is pretty, it's, well, I mean, getting her to jump high in the hole makes the trick pretty easy, but it's completely RNG based. You can still get the trick with a low jump, but that's much, much harder. So you definitely want her to do a high jump so that you can uh, get the cyber flower pretty easily. I just didn't know slide jumps up there, that's not important. So cyber flower, we don't really want that item, it's not that important, but that item is at the very end of what we call System Interior 2. And System Interior 2 is only accessible uh, in Chapter 7. So, we don't actually need to do System 2 for any other reason than to grab Cyber Flower. Because with some other glitches, we can actually enter um, Library, which is the final area of the game with the final boss. We can actually enter Library pretty early on. Well, not pretty early on, but we can actually get there without having to enter chapter 8. Because norm normally in a, in a casual playthrough of this game, you would go through System Interior 2 and you would um, go to chapter 8 from that and from there you could enter library the normal way. But with some other glitches we don't actually need to do that. But we still needed to go there so that we could grab Cyber Flower. But if you use Cyber Flower early, you don't need to go there at all. So that saves about 5 minutes in the run. So from there we'll be uh, well, we're collecting the rest of the items in System Interior right now. Just name of this area. And we're going to skip the boss of this area actually. So what I just did there was um, I guess a weirder slide jump zip. If you do a slide jump zip, well if you if you do a slide jump zip, but you're slightly low, but you also hit an autosave. But when you reload from the autosave, it does the same thing as if you were to go through the apex of your jump at a slide jump, which is it puts your hitbox back where it's supposed to be. So if you hit an autosave while, I guess, failing a slide jump zip, if you reload and you were high enough, you can actually just do the same thing as a slide jump zip. And if you do a slide jumps up into that boss's arena, you can actually completely skip it. 
We're going to be doing that for a couple other bosses coming up in a while. There's not a lot of bosses in this category because we skip a lot of them. So now we're grabbing the final items in the laboratory so that we never have to go back here again. That was the final item and now we can just leave. So as you can see with air dash, it's a very very fast method of movement, much faster than anything else in the game. That's why we want it as early on as possible. So right now we're just going up through the right side of uh, Golden Riverbank. We're going to grab a couple items along the way and then we're going to go fight Ashri 2. It's probably one of my least favorite bosses, honestly. Ashri 2 is probably the most random boss in this entire game. There's not a lot that you can do that can control what she can do. So you just have to deal with what you're given. And plus, at the very end of her height, um, she'll enter a very long defense boost phase. Defense boost is a buff that some bosses can have. And while they have that on, it's it's kind of like a defense up, but on a whole new scale. You can barely hit them at all when they have defense boost on. And that's the whole reason we got the Coco Bomb. We're going to try to skip the entirety of that defense boost phase. So I'm going to bring her down to about this much damage. Use the Coco Bomb and completely miss getting the, the fast kill. But now her health is really low. We skip most of her defense boost phase. You can skip the entirety of it if you do it properly. Which, I mean, as you can see, I didn't do. That was actually too. That actually went really well, consider all things considered. The fastest Ashry 2 normally. You would, um, after the Coco Bomb, if you do the Coco Bomb at the right time, she's going to be stuck in hit stun after the Coco Bomb hits. And she won't have defense boost while she's in hit stun, so you can just hit her right then and there and finish up the fight. So our final boss for a while is coming up, which is called Saya. After that we'll be going, be going through uh, quite a lot of item collection. There's an interesting um, trick coming up right here. It's called an amulet climb. So that's what it is. Um, when you do a wall jump, if you amulet, you will. Um, I don't know. You will. You're gonna reset your um, falling speed, and you can do like a, a chain of wall jumps and amulets and you will gain a tiny bit of height every time you amulet and that allows us to sometimes get access to places we're not supposed to be able to access this boss is Saya um, she is the, the recurring gag of Red Ruby She's, she has such a low presence that normally you're not able to, to see her and now you also can't see her because she's dead Uh, you did see me do one thing before the fight. You saw me reload as I entered the fight. Uh, this isn't my domain of expertise in this game, but the reason why we do that is because Air Dash, well, it's not only a great movement item, it's also a very good attacking item. We can do a lot of damage to bosses that way. But uh, damage from Air Dash lowers every time you actually I'm not sure how to explain this well sometimes it just lowers and that lower damage doesn't reset until you reload an auto save so for the sake of doing that tiny bit of extra damage we have to reload before we fight Saya so now we're entering a really really long period of item collection I don't really have much to say here 
So I'll just let the cool movement and gameplay speak for itself. There is going to be an amulet climb coming up pretty shortly. It's a pretty easy one. Here's a cool bounce. This is the last time you're gonna see Riverbank for a while. We'll be going back to it at the very end of the game to grab a, a few items. That was the amulet climb. So right now we're just gonna do most of uh, the forest, the starting forest area, and most of Golden Riverbank. We'll be going back to them at the very end of the game to get the last few remaining items that we could get right now. But we can get them, it's just really slow to get them right now. We want to wait until we have a couple more items. No more darkness. I guess I could talk about some cool facts about this game. Um, this game is actually completely... You can do the entirety of this game without collecting a single item. It was made with the purpose, well, with the intent of being completable in any way one would want to complete it. So you can grab all the items, you can grab none of the items, you can fight the bosses in pretty much any order that you want to. That's why this game is actually like a really cool Metroidvania. opinion anyways. We're gonna grab the last few items and inspect, well, not the last items, most of the last items in Spectral Cave so that we we're going to need to come back here once at the very end of the game again. A forest, the, a forest warp after a boss is going to lead us here. So we're going to grab the final items from then and there. Also something else I probably should mention, sometimes you see me go through, well, you might see me go, what seems to be me going through enemy attacks. That's not actually through, this is, uh, well, I didn't say earlier, this is essentially a bullet hell game too. Your hitbox is really, really small. It's located about in the center of your, your sprite, your character sprite. But it is much, much smaller than your character sprite, so... If you see a bullet go through my legs, don't worry, that's normal. I'm not taking damage. You also saw me do something weird there. You saw me go back to town just so I could grab a cocoa bomb. And the reason for that is there is a mini boss right here. That takes forever if you don't have a cocoa bomb. But when you do have a cocoa bomb, yeah, there goes the mini boss. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what that happens either, but it does. Uh, here's a side chapter, something that happens when you get uh, six town members. I guess I could also explain the concept of town members. Well, I, should, I should finish explaining side chapter first. Side chapters is just something that happens when you reach six town members. It's kind of like a little intermission thing. Um, every time, you, well not every time you fight a boss, but most of the time. Well, okay. The goal of the main game of Rabi Rabi is to collect 10 town members so that you can enter chapter 5 and beat the main game boss. The main game final boss, I guess. So 10 members are essentially just like a mark of progression through the game, I guess I could say. 
we're going to need to get all of them because you can't enter the library. Well, you can't spawn the final boss without having all town members. Well, you can. There is an, an, an optional town member, but that optional town member, she's hiding an item, so we have to de defeat her anyways. And also, I mean, it's just a higher mark of completion. Why not? There is an amulet climb you could do right here. That saves some time. It doesn't. It saves having to go all the way around, but it's it's extremely hard for me, so I don't do it. So regarding what I just said about defeating a boss, not necessarily not blah, 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 not necessarily equating to um, recruiting a town member. Right there, you just saw we uh, had a cutscene with Saya. When you defeat Saya, you actually don't recruit her as a town member. You have to go all the way over there and uh, get her cutscene. We're gonna finish up uh, Evernight right now, which is this area. We're gonna grab the last items and we're gonna leave. I'll skip this egg because I don't like it. That is actually the entire reason why I don't get that egg. Oh yeah, you saw me do this a couple of times, but I should explain it. Um, sometimes I drop a carrot, bob, uh, a carrot bomb on a ledge and I let it fall down below. And the way that works is if a carrot bomb hits the floor at least once, then even if it falls down to another screen, it will still explode and do the, the, the effects that it should normally be doing. If you just drop a carrot bomb down a hole and it goes through the screen transition, it's not going to explode. So sometimes you can just drop two carry bombs in a row, one to open a pathway, and one to uh, open uh, even in a further pathway below. You see me do that a couple times. Here is um, Aurora Castle. Uh, the entire reason we actually did that uh, big movement gathering thing, well, item gathering part, so that we could grab Fire Orb at the very end of it. Fire Orb is... A very good attacking item, first off. We're going to be upgrading it later on, and we're going to be using it to do a ton of damage to some bosses. But it also allows us to break these ice blocks right here that you just saw. If you don't have Fire Orb, you cannot break those blocks. So we, that's, we need it so that we can do this area in one trip and not have to go back twice. At the very end of this area is a kind of annoying boss, but also... Um, a very nice item called Water Orb. I'll explain what it does as soon as I get it, but from the name you can probably gather what it does. So here's um, Bounce. She has a name, it's called Nieve, but we just call her Bounce. In honor to her theme song, Bounce Bounce. And also because she bounces around everywhere. During this fight, I'm actually looking for some specific um, HP threshold, I guess I should say. I want her health to hit... Well, I want her to do um, attacks at specific HP... Um, specific points of her HP bar. Because she'll do different attacks depending on what her HP is. And I want her to do attacks that are uh, beneficial to me. That is to say that I can hit her while she's doing those attacks. Because she has quite a few attacks where she's just in, up in the air and you can't really do damage to, to her. So we picked up Water Orb after that boss. Water Orb, um, I mean, it's a pretty simple item. You could probably guess it by yourself. Water Orb just makes us move. It's kind of like the gravity suit, I guess, from Metroid. You just move really fast in water. And with it, we can now just go to the Aquarium, which is the underwater part of the game. It's also the reason why we didn't do everything in Golden River Bank um, in that item gathering part, because there are there was an item that is hidden bet behind quite a bit of water, so it's very slow to get. So 
So here's another zip. It's a slide jump zip, but underwater slide jump zips are a little bit weirder. You can't do them the normal way. You have to do your slide jump in a little bit of a different way. The effects are still the same though, and general idea is still the same. There's not much to say here, I'm just going through aquarium and grabbing all the items. I will explain a little something pretty soon. Uh, there's a boss skip with a zip coming up, but it's a pretty weird one, so... There's gonna be a little bit of explaining to do, even though I don't really understand exactly how it works either. Well, I, I mean, I guess I do, but it's just, it's still really weird to me. So right here, I'm going to stand here, and I'm going to do a slide jump, and bam, I'm in the boss arena, and bam, I just skipped the boss. So what I did there was actually a slide jump zip, but it didn't look at all like a slide jump zip. Because Water Orb is a fantastic item. The gravity is so low that you can actually just do, you can actually just jump into that corner and fall. And if you do it right, you will actually do the exact same thing as if you were to do a slide jump zip. That boss is completely skipped. It's great because it's kind of an annoying boss. We'll grab the rest of the items in Aquarium now. So yeah, with Aquarium's low uh, well, water gravity, you can actually do them. Pretty nice slide jumps. And go really, really, really fast. So that was the last item in Aquarium. You're never gonna see us go back through here again. So you might have noticed, but right now the screen is actually um, a little dark. It's actually, well, right now we're just, while we're grabbing the last few items on this side of uh, Red Reef Beach, I guess I'll explain that. The way darkness works in this game, that's just the name of the effect that's applied to me right now. Especially, like, I can't see anything, but, um, well, my screen, other than around Arena, it's kind of dark. Normally it'd be completely dark if I didn't have Light Orb, but thankfully I do. The reason why it's still on right now is because of that slide zip I did to get into the boss arena. Essentially I hit a start darkness trigger, but I never hit an end darkness trigger. Normally if you weren't if you wouldn't do the slide jump zip, you would normally hit an end darkness trigger. But uh, I didn't. So well, thankfully I'm going to hit an autosave pretty soon and I'm going to reload and that's going to uh, fix everything. But uh, you get to enjoy this for a little while. So here I reload to, uh, to fix a stupid bug. I, I can't even explain this, it's just a weird bug. I can't really, I don't even know why it works. But I reload there to skip that. <laughs> I'm getting confused <laughs> to fix that bug. Uh, and you just saw us do another slide jumps up there, and then we did we saved at the save point, and then we reloaded, and that actually does skip the boss that you were normally supposed to fight there. Here's a slide jumps up to enter um, the area that we skipped at the very beginning of the game. Normally you have to go through this area to get the Ravi slippers. But we did early slippers so we usually never have to go through here. But uh, there is one item that we wanted here. Just a mana potion. But we need it for 100%. But we also want to do another glitch here. 
This is the second part of the glitch, well, uh, Cyber Flower Early that you saw me explain earlier. So Cyber Flower Early allows us to get Cyber Flower so that we don't need to enter System Interior 2 at all. This glitch is called um, a Risu Escape or a System Interior 2 Skip. And what it does is that we actually enter an area that we're not supposed to access until Chapter 8. And we trigger a cutscene. And when we trigger that cutscene, it starts kind of the library opening sequence. Just, just the, the sequence of cutscenes that triggers the opening of the final area. And so now that we just activated that cutscene that we unlocked by going into the area that we weren't supposed to enter, uh, we, the library is actually open to us. And so now we just need to get all the town members so that we can properly enter it. So like that, we never have to enter chapter 8. There was also um, a weird zip that you saw me do to exit um, the room that I wasn't supposed to enter. Because I don't have another name for it. But that's called a slide tunnel zip. I don't I, th I think that's, I think that's what we call them. I'm not sure. But if you exit a slide at the very beginning of a slide tunnel, um, it does the same effects as a slide zip. Well, a slide jump zip, or just a zip. can actually get that's the only way to get out of that room early because the entrance is completely blocked here is Nixie skip um, yeah uh, yeah yeah there we go the boss is done <laughs> I guess I'll try to explain that that's actually like really a really complex uh, glitch so when you hit an auto save um, it refreshes your double jump. So you could continuously hit an autosave over and over, and you could gain height by using your double jump every time. But the way autosaves work is that if you hit an autosave, then until you hit a specific tile, well, it's like an invisible trigger that says that you can autosave again, you won't be able to autosave again. So that's why normally you can't do that. But there is actually like an invisible wall to the right of that arena. That like arena where you fight the boss. And we can just wall jump off of it and continuously hit the autosave. And we can actually gain enough height that way so that we jump over the boss trigger into the boss arena and we trigger the fight in the wrong direction and it actually allows us to completely skip the boss. It's probably one of the most complicated glitches to pull off. Once you understand how to do it though, and you have the muscle memory, it's not that bad. So now we're going through Ravine. Um, there's not much to say here, we're just gonna grab all the items, fight the boss and leave. It's a very straightforward area. It's a very nice area too, because you can pretty much just do it at any point in the route. It doesn't affect too much. We do want a lot of move items for this area though, so that we can do some pretty nice stuff. I should also say, um, this is actually like my route. Hawkwa, which is the other like top runner of this category, uses a very slightly different route that does this area a lot earlier in the run. As you can see, I'm at 10 town members right now. Uh, Hakwa does this area while he's at five town members. That's pretty much like the main differences between our routes. I do this area way later than he does. Just gonna grab the last few items in this area and then we can fight the boss. Oh yeah, I did get the super carrot. Um, well, I'm gonna talk about it when I get it. It's part of the reason why we wanted to upgrade the um, carrot bomb very early on when we fought Alias 3. Just do a bunch of damage and she's gonna go up in the air. 
now you can see me do Super Carrot. So that's Super Carrot. Uh, that's a very great item for bosses that fly around, like this one. You can, you, normally you're supposed to wait a while before you can use it again, but if you use an amulet, it resets the cooldown. That's why I can use multiple in a row. I might just waste my amulets. So here's another shop trip. Uh, we want to grab... Well, we bought we got fire herbal. Well, okay. Here's uh, Nieve. She gives us a very nice buff. It's give defense down. So sometimes when you hit a boss, it's gonna put the defense down buff on that boss. And now we want to level up fire orbs so that we can do a lot of damage with it. We want to level up charge ring as well, so that we can. Um, well, for the for the next boss, not this boss that's coming out right here, but for the next boss, having charge ring level three uh, makes the boss incredibly trivial. So you can't actually hit this boss normally, but when we put uh, defense down on her, you can we can actually start doing normal damage to her. Normally, this is just uh, an endurance fight. You're just supposed to wait until the boss dies normally because she always takes damage. But that's slow. We don't want to do that. So we're going to be using defense down to do some damage with our hammer. We're also going to be using red boost because red boost um, kind of stops the boss in her tracks while she's moving, so it's great. Unless I miss it like I did right there. There we go. So now we're going back to um, Sky Island Town, which is the area we needed Bunny Strike to get into. We're going to be grabbing the items there and we're going to fight the boss. And while by fighting the boss, I mean not doing a, long, a whole lot. So Lilith, which is the boss we're about to fight, is actually a two-part fight. The first part is um, like any other boss, just like hit her with a hammer. But uh, we're going to go out of bounds, and we're not going to fight her. So we just skip the entirety of the first part of her fight, because for some reason you can just go above her, her arena. And now we get access to this little auto-scroller section. And at the very end of it is going to be the second part of her fight. Uh, I got nothing to say here, so just enjoy the music. This is pretty... Yeah, just don't do anything. But I guess you can see, now that we have charge ring level 3, uh, we can charge up Ribbon's charge attack very, very quickly. So yeah, that's all I gotta say. Normally I'd hum to the beat of music, but I can't actually hear the video right now, so... Into the uh, the auto scroller section. I thought that was the end right there. So here's the lift. Uh, this is the lift. As you can see, we're doing damage.
and that was Lif. So yeah, when you have charge ring level 3, that entire boss fight is extremely trivial. Just stand in her face and do a lot of damage. It's also a weird side effect of the yellow magic. When you're in those aerial flying sections, every single hit of yellow magic is actually going to do damage to the boss. So it does a ton of damage. Uh, here's another boss, Pandora. Normally you're not supposed to beat her until like the very end of this area. But with a slide jump, we can just a slide jumps it, we can just get to her right away and take care of her. We're gonna wait for her to attack right here because this attack we can just do a ton of damage during it. So beat the boss first, do the area next. Now we're gonna grab every item in here. This is the final area for um, the main game that we want to do. After this, we're going to go fight the main game final boss and move on to post game. Here's purple magic, the chaos rod. You're going to see us use it exactly one string this run, the very, very end. In the old route of this, we used to do this room without Light Orb. It was uh, not fun. Those spikes do a lot of damage. Oh yeah, coming up is a pretty interesting zip. Um, it's called the Armored Zip. It's the only zip of its kind anywhere in the game. The way it works is you get hit by um, a heavy attack, which does a lot of uh, knock a stun, right here while you're jumping. And for some reason that zips you. And the reason why it's called the armored zip is because you normally obtain the armored badge while you do it. Because the armored badge is hidden in the block right there. This is the only zip that we found that actually works like that. We couldn't replicate it anywhere else. So I'm just gonna grab the last few items of Pyramid and then we're gonna go fight uh, Miro. So now it's time to go save the most important thing in the world, our master's sister. She's been, uh, I don't actually remember, I don't actually remember the story at this point. Uh, brainwashed or something and now she, she's evil and we, we gotta save her and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So Miru is actually a pretty long fight. It's also very annoying because you don't have ribbon during this fight, for plot reasons. Hey, Miru has a lot of HP. So we're gonna be doing a lot of these reverse hammer hits while she's blocking, and a lot of super carrots will combine with fire orb to do a lot of damage. And hopefully it takes her down uh, fairly quickly. Oh, note, right now I'm using the Halloween costume. That's the reason that we can see the boss has 30 health bars. If you use a normal costume of the game, it does only like one big health bar. So that was Miru. Now we're gonna go fight the true final boss of the main game called Noah. And by fighting I mean we're gonna 
not really fight her. So what I'm doing here, I think I'm about to fail it too. I think I failed it once in here. Yeah, because I, I didn't have enough SP. So all right, try, attempt number two. Well, what I'm doing here is uh, what we call a no skip. So when you get inflicted with giant, when you come back from your giant debuff, if you do a nub drill and an amulet at the right height while you're falling down and losing your giant buff, uh, you can actually zip. And that allows us to skip the first phase of the final boss and the second phase of the final boss. So now we're on to the third phase of the final boss. <laughs> because no skip. self-explanatory just do a lot of triple hammer hits rep threes as we call them and lots of super carrots lots of fire orb just your, your basic damage and there we go so that was the main game of rabi rabi but obviously we're not at 100 percent items there's still quite a bit to go because the main game ends at chapter five the post game ends in chapter 8. We're not going to see chapter 8, we're just going to see chapter 6 and 7. So we're going to do a quick shop trip so that we can buy some buffs and some attack ups. And then after that, we're going to go fight Rumi. So Rumi is the boss at the very end of the boss rush. He's the thing that we did very early on with the low percent items. But we didn't fight Rumi right away because fighting Rumi brings you to chapter 7. And bringing us to chapter 7 would increase boss levels significantly, so we don't want to do that. So we just wait until now to fight Rumi. Rumi also gives us a fourth amulet, so it's really nice. Rumi is actually probably one of the harder boss fights to do very quickly. So we want to do a lot of damage every phase. Because Rumi has five phases, and if she attacks in any of her phases, then you have to wait for the attack to be over before she can jump up and move on to the next phase. So here I just completely skip this phase because she doesn't get to attack, she's already at 1 HP. But now after this phase, um, she starts putting on what's called the 99 Reflect. 99 Reflect is a damage reflect move. If you do more than 99 damage to the boss while that uh, that buff is on the boss, all of your damage gets reflected back to you. So with the damage that we do, we just we would just fall down to 1 HP right away. So here we actually just attack through 99 Reflect so that we can bring her to 1 HP. And we're going to use the cake right here so that we can get our HP back. So that way we can skip ahead of some phases with some consumable items. Sadly, I don't think we we're going to be able to get through all of the phases that way because we don't have enough consumables. So here I just accept my fate like I was nowhere near um, 1 HP, so... I just decided to take this attack and wait until our Reflect is gone so I can bring her down to 1 HP. go so now she's gonna jump up and now she doesn't actually have 99 reflect right here and well the reason for that is that she doesn't put it on when she jumps up she put it she puts it on when she lands but normally she jumps back up so quickly that she still has it when she's in the air So I use amulets here to just make sure that um, she falls down to 1 HP. And so here I'm going to be using my, the golden carrot that we picked up earlier. And 
You know, I just thought of something. I should probably use the donut right here and keep the golden carrot for um, Eerie soon. I'm gonna do the same thing right here, but this time it doesn't matter because we're at the very end of the fight, anyways. So we can just end her right then and there. So that was Rumi, probably one of the harder bosses. So now we're going to grab the last items in Spectral Cave and move on to Hollow Memories. Hollow Memories, which is normally the first area that you go to in Chapter 6, but uh, now we're in Chapter 7, so uh, whatever. You could theoretically do Romy and Miriam in any order that you want. But I think it's better to do Romy first because Romy is the harder boss between Romy and Miriam. Miriam being the boss at the end of Hollow Memories. So you want buffs for Romy for sure. So Hollow Memories is just a really long kind of not really boss rush area, kind of area rush be the best way to say it you just go through small snippets of every area you've been through enemies here while they're strong but they also give a lot of money so you're gonna be see me playing quite aggressive here just so I can get a bunch of money There's not a lot to say here, this is just a pretty normal area, there's no zips or anything, or cool glitches. Just go through here, go fast, get some money. Actually, there's this glitch right here. If you hit a screen transition while like one of those thwomps that you saw is shaking the screen, it's actually going to despawn every enemy in the next room. Don't know why it happens, but uh, it does. Lots of ribbons right here. I don't know why there's eight ribbons in that room. Why couldn't there just been one ribbon? Hall of Memories, so now we're gonna go fight the boss. I'm gonna grab Carrot Shooter too. We're gonna go fight the boss, Miriam. Miriam is, uh, I guess, the copycat boss. She uses the items and badges that you have on you at the moment to uh, do attacks. None of that really matters to us because this is casual difficulty. 
and everything is really easy and not casual. Super carrots and fire orbs just to make sure that we do a ton of damage. That was Miriam. So now we're gonna go through the final bit of item collection left in the run. We're gonna go back to Golden Riverbank, grab the last few items in there. The reason that we didn't actually go through, we could have gone through this section earlier on. But uh, you're gonna see in a little bit, there are some two items that are underwater. And at the point that we would have gone through this area, we did not have the water orb yet. So when you don't have the water orb in water, you move really slowly. No joke. We also would not have had the light orb, which is uh, very handy for this area because there's spikes everywhere. Yeah, this, this item used to be a hell to get. So that was the last item in Golden River Bank. So now all that's left is uh, starting forest in Plurkwood. Plurkwood is the optional area of the game. Well, it's not optional in 100%, but normally you don't ever need to go there at all to uh, beat the game. The reason we wait so long to go to Plurkwood is that we actually want Carrot Shooter for one specific room in Plurkwood. It's a very long room, but with a Carrot Shooter you can actually completely skip it. So you're going to see that when we get to it. For now we're just going to grab the few items that we skipped out on at the very beginning of the game. And now we're going to go up to Night Forest. So the reason we keep Night Forest last is because this is the entry pathway to Plurkwood, so no reason to go here early on if we're just going to go back here later for Plurkwood. Again, we're doing the mini boss glitch here. Um, you actually have to be careful here if you're doing the mini boss glitch. If you do the mini boss glitch and then you hit another enemy after the fight's over, well not hit, but just defeat another enemy after the fight's over, uh, you will actually get sent all the way to uh, Rabi Rabi Beach for some reason. So what we just did, we just skipped uh, another boss, of course, <laughs> as we always do. Um, that was actually a bit of a special boss skip. It's called Arurani Skip. Uh, and that's the entire reason we bought Speed Boost 2 at the very beginning of the game. If you do a hammer roll and you press jump and up, while you're doing the hammer roll, you will actually do like sort of a Shoryuken move where you bounce up really, really high when you hit an enemy. And when we have a speed boost too, we can actually uh, do that and enter from the backside of our Ronnie's fight. And when you enter from the backside, well, you're not normally supposed to be able to do that. So when you enter from the backside, it just kind of skips the boss entirely. So this is Plurkwood, uh, kind of a neat area, lots of cool stuff, pretty hard to, of course, and casual as always, it's a breeze. There's pretty much nothing in this entire area except one item at the very end, or is this 100% we want that item, and we also want the boss, of course.
Here's another mini boss, and here's another mini boss log glitch. Neat little fact here: we're actually going to aim for the. Well, here I'm going to miss, but we're actually want, we actually want to aim for the pink one. The pink one has slightly less health than the blue one for some reason. This fight is actually really cool, like casually. Normally, you're supposed to like beat both of them within a certain amount of time. It's like a very neat concept. But uh, with mini boss low glitch, uh, none of that, none of that's going on. Just defeat one and uh, yeah, move on. So this room right here, you see me open up carrot shooter and use the boost. So normally through that room, you have to go all the way at the very end and drop a carrot bomb so that you can break open that uh, like a really long pathway and it eventually breaks the exit that was right above us at the start. With carrot shooter boost you can actually just uh, use a ribbon to drop some bombs up there and it actually breaks that and it skips like going through the entire room and back. It's like a neat 30 second time save. So this is KK Bunny. You want to do a ton of damage right at the very start. So that way she is going to go into a very specific attack right here where she just stands there and does nothing and we can just uh, whack her over and over and again until she dies. KK has some very annoying attacks if you don't control her properly. Sometimes she can just like teleport away. There's nothing you can do against that. So now we can exit Porkwood, and at this point we're ready to go to the final area of the game. We have every item, except the items at the, well, the floating graveyard, which is the area right before the final area. We kind of skipped over it earlier. We're going to go to the shop one final time though, because there are some items in the shop that we want. These four items specifically, they both, they, all four of them count for item percentage. And now we're gonna go look around for KK Bunny because, oh, oh, what a mess! I remember this. <laughs> yeah, you don't you. It's kind of hard to talk to the proper NPC when they're all jumbled up together like that. And if you talk to the wrong NPC, you might just get the wrong buff and lose a bunch of money. It's not fun. So the reason we have to talk to KK Bunny is because defeating KK Bunny doesn't actually count for recruiting her. We do have to talk to her for some reason to actually recruit her properly. So we're gonna grab these three buffs. We're gonna grab Give Defense Down. We're gonna grab uh, Attack Up. And here you can see I'm kind of in a conundrum. I don't know what to do because if I talked, I wanna talk to Kotri, but if I try to talk to her, I'm gonna talk to Chocolate. So I actually go to the autosave and reload because I just, I didn't know what to do there. Reloading puts the NPCs in new positions. So this is Floating Graveyard. We're gonna grab the final few items here. I believe I do uh, make a very large blunder in my PB. And I miss an item in this area. Rather important item. Oh yeah, I also fall here, but that's not really important. You can easily get back up there. Just like that. Yeah, okay, so there's an item. So here you can see the library is open the normal way. And so to the left of me right now, there is an item. And I just totally skipped over it. So after the final boss is down, I'm going to have to go grab that item again. Bit of a shame. I think I only realized I skipped that item when I got um, auto-trigger and hit 97.5%. Might 
might have been top form, I'm not sure. But the item that I skipped is actually Crisis Boost. It's a badge that I actually use in the final boss. So, kind of a shame. Because the final boss is actually a pretty tight battle. So I want all the damage I can get. Crisis Boost, the way it works is it increases your attack by a rather large amount when you're in, uh, when you're in, well, when your HP is below 20% or 15%, I don't know. It works kind of like the, the badges in Paper Mario, if you know those. Here's one final slide up. Here's an item right here that you can grab. <laughs> you can grab. Normally, you, we would grab this in Sky Island Town, but it's actually just faster to wait until the very end of the game and grab it right then and there. Yeah, here I do something really stupid. I go take some damage. Even though I know I don't have Crisis Boost, I'm just too used to having damage here, so I just take damage. Really stupid thing to do. So here's the final boss, Irisu. We're gonna do badge glitch on her again. We're gonna put on a bunch of badges. It's the final boss of the game, so it doesn't really matter. Here, I actually mess it up and I get hit by the first amulet. The very beginning of the fight, Iris is gonna put out a couple amulets. And if you get hit by one of those amulets, you get uh, a pretty, some pretty nasty debuffs on you. So you really wanna like amulet through her amulets so that you don't get completely destroyed like that and here because I don't have crisis boost I'm forced to use a boost right here if I had crisis boost like I would not have had to do that really easy so Irisu is a rather peculiar fight I guess in a way she works like Rumi and she has multiple phases and until she goes down to a certain point in her health bar, she's not going to go to her next phase. But the problem with Irisu is that if you let her attack even once, she's going to be stuck doing a sequence of attacks before she can even move on to her next phase. So if you let her attack once at any point, usually it's uh, like a major time loss, like something a minute, maybe a minute and a half. So that's why the whole reason why we want her to, uh, well, her, she, the first phase is 30 health bars to 20 health bars, the second phase is 20 to 10, and the third phase is 10 to 0. So in the first phase, we want to get her down to 20 health bars before she even teleports away to the background. Here, it doesn't really matter when we get her to 10 health bars. Of course, earlier on is better, but even if we do her, we do it slightly later on, she's still gonna go um, in her third phase. Second phase is the easier part. This chart that we use for second phase is actually pretty hard still, but so this is the third phase. This is the most punishing phase if you mess it up. If you let her attack here, I believe you lose. Um, I'm not actually sure how much time, I know it's um, like something ridiculous. I'm pretty sure if you let her attack here, even once at all, she has to go through like pretty much her entire third phase before she can uh, consider moving on to the next phase. So we're going to be using pretty much everything we have in our arsenal to just make sure that that doesn't happen. This is the reason we bought a Cocoa Bomb in town, that we can do a ton of damage. So I use it here. We don't need to bring her all the way down to 1 HP. If she's below 1000, she'll move on to the, now, the final phase. So here, this is the final phase of Irisu. I used the donut here so I can have some more HP and I can refill my boost meter. So Irisu goes back to 30 health. 
and she jumps in the background so that we can't do damage to her. And this is just like the Cena 2 fight that we did um, like 30 minutes ago. Well, except in Cena 2 we could use give defense down to do some damage, but essentially this is just an endurance section. So, we can't do damage to her because she's in the background, but actually, Purple Boost has a very peculiar effect in that it debuffs the, the boss with Cursed. The way Cursed works is when you get hit, the boss gets hit too. So we just put Cursed on the boss, and then we just jump at every single one of her bullets. And it actually significantly speeds up this fight. And so now we just wait until we have enough boost to do another purple boost and jump at some more bullets. In the meantime, we just dodge everything. And so now we have another purple boost. Normally your boost doesn't fill up by itself, but with one of the shop items that we got, which I believe is... I'm not actually sure which one it is. I think it's Book of Carrots. It allows us to uh, refill our boost um, without... Well, just letting it refill on its own, without any other help. And there we go. That's the final boss. So time isn't now because we're not at 100% items. We have to go get some final few items that we cannot get until the final boss is defeated. Well, and also the item that I forgot. <laughs> so another round of credits that we can skip. And so here's the two items that we're normally not... So here's the arena and ribbon badges. Or you cannot get this before beating the final boss, no matter what. And so now we're going to quickly go back and get Crisis Boost because we forgot it earlier. And time's right now. So yeah, that's it for Rabbi Ruby 100%. Timing ends on, well, when you pick up the final item, because there's no way you can get the final item before you, you defeat the final boss. So yeah, I think that about covers everything. Hope you enjoyed this commentary. Thank you for watching, I guess.